I'm a bit of a Daria fanboy. In fact, excluding Scrubs, it's probably my favorite and most watched TV show of all time. So when I saw that today was going to be the anniversary of the final episode slash TV movie, Is It College Yet? I decided to rewatch the show for the millionth time and do a top 10 favorite episodes list. Then I got sucked in. Maybe one day I'll do that top 10 episode list, but before I could even consider that, I had to really unpack my feelings about this show. It started as a simple project, but continued to grow and grow, and suddenly I'm looking at four pages of notes and an overwhelming sense of nostalgia. I have a million thoughts that I need to parse out, but I'll start with my thesis statement and what will probably be the name of this video, that Daria is the most accurate depiction of high school in television history. I'm sure you're thinking I'm crazy that a cartoon from the 90s would be the most accurate depiction of high school ever, but I ask you to think about what other options are there. Riverdale, Beverly Hills 90210, Saved by the Bell or Glee. Honestly, the only show that could even sort of be comparable would be Freaks and Geeks or My So-Called Life. If you ignore the fashion, the slang, and the music, at its core, Daria is truly a timeless series, and the characters are forever relatable. It takes issues that are sadly still being discussed today and managed to be one of the earliest examples of a serialized cartoon series, which is now the norm. And speaking of serialization, let's break down the show's timeline. Daria was first introduced as a recurring character on Beavis and Butthead as a foil to the dumb duo. Around the time that Beavis and Butthead was wrapping up their final season, MTV suggested a spinoff for the character, hoping to bring in a higher female demographic, and approached Beavis and Butthead story editor Glenn Elker to make a pilot. The five-minute short, sealed with a kick, was presented to a focus group with four other animated pilots and received the strongest reaction. Two years later, the debut episode premiered, on March 3rd, 1997. This episode called Esteemers established Daria's family and moved them from Highland to Lawndale. It quickly established the family dynamic of the Morgendorfers. Daria is the sarcastic, monotone, antisocial high schooler, while her younger sister Quinn is the attractive, preppy gossip girl. Her mother Helen is a workaholic, while her dad Jake often struggles with work, his childhood trauma, and anger management. We also meet Daria's first real friend in Jane Lane. Esteemers is a perfectly fine pilot, but I want to draw attention to a particular scene real fast. Daria, what do you see in the picture, Dara? A herd of beautiful wild ponies running free across the plains. Uh, there aren't any ponies. It's two people. Last time I took one of these tests, they told me they were clouds. They said they could be whatever I wanted. That's a different test, dear. In this test, they're people and you tell me what they're discussing. Oh, it's a guy and a girl, and they're discussing a herd of beautiful wild ponies running free across the plains. I want you to remember this scene for later in the video because it's perfect evidence of how layered this show is at playing the long game. The second episode is arguably a better introduction to the characters and the bigger world of the show. In the episode, we meet Quinn's circle of friends, the fashion club, the school pervert Charles Up Chuck Ruttenheimer, and most importantly, Jane's older brother Trent, who would become Daria's love interest for the first four seasons of the show. It's during this episode when Brittany is struggling with understanding art concepts that Daria is able to teach her using terms that she can understand. You're at the mall. You're standing in front of J.J. Jeter's. Oh, like I would shop there. You're looking at Cashman's department store. Now you're talking. Way down at the other end. Everything seems to be pointing to the entrance and saying, Come shop. Come shop. One day sale. I get it. This is another thing I'm going to ask you to remember for later in this video because it's an early example of Daria having the potential to be a great teacher. As a thank you for Daria's help, Brittany invites Daria to her upcoming party, and it's during this interaction that Brittany says a line that I always think about when thinking of this show. Even though I'm much more popular, we have some things in common. Breathing. I mean, you're not popular, but you're not so unpopular that you couldn't come to my party Saturday night. What makes Daria such a special show is that it's not about someone who's at the bottom of the totem pole. In fact, Daria and Jane are fairly liked by their classmates. They're not popular, but they're far from unpopular. 
You never see them getting mocked or ridiculed. Sometimes popular students like Brittany or Kevin will say something unintentionally mean, but they still frequently socialize with them. They'll chat with them at the local pizza shop or stop them in the hallways. Meanwhile, Jody and Mac are constantly being depicted as admiring of Jane and Daria's individuality. Jane and Daria represent the average high school student. They represent the extras that you would see in your typical 90s teen flick. They represented me. I was never someone who got picked on in high school. Sure, I was on the stage crew and I did TV studio, but that was it. I frequently hung out with college kids who were four years my senior. I had a small group of friends at school that were my own age, but I was far from a traditionally popular kid. Like, I'd say that 90% of the students in my grade knew who I was, and not just that they were aware of my name. Like, they knew my interests. Sometimes they'd ask me for movie suggestions, or we would talk about music, or they would get my opinions on random things, like the final episode of Daria. I legitimately remember someone asking me how I felt about the final episode. Daria captured this experience, which is definitely far more of the relatable teenage experience than being the prom king or being the school punching bag. The next episode I want to discuss is episode five. It's called Mauled. At the time of Daria's popularity, it was not uncommon for MTV to dedicate full days of just showing reruns of one of their shows. They still do this with the show Ridiculousness, except now it's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I was 12 when Daria debuted, and growing up in a gender-specific era, I thought, why would I, a boy, want to watch a show with a girl as its lead? And I never watched the show until it was the only thing on TV one day, leading up to the release of season three. During that marathon, I distinctly remember watching the episode Mauled and enjoyed it. I also distinctly remember seeing the episodes Road Warrior, in which Daria's crush on Trent intensifies during a road trip to Alternative Palooza, and an episode that truly made me a fan, The Daria Hunter, which is full of weird film homages, including a bizarre Jaws-inspired subplot. Of course, the mayor claimed the chewed up bodies were the victims of a propeller, but the people knew better. Excuse me, but isn't this the plot of Jaws? No, no, this is completely different. Season one wraps up with an episode called Misery Chick. This episode highlights what I was speaking of earlier, that while Daria is misunderstood, people still speak to her. Daria and Jane meet a local celebrity and former Lawndale High quarterback, Tommy Sherman, and they find Sherman to be a sexist misogynist. Shortly after wishing he would just go away, he dies in a freak accident on their campus. Throughout the episode, students keep coming up to Daria for advice on how to deal with death because she's the misery chick. Daria finally breaks and gives a powerful speech which highlights Daria's character to her core. Okay, but you know what I've been hearing? You know how I feel, Daria. You're gloomy. I knew I could talk to you, Daria. You're always miserable. Tragedy hits the school and everyone thinks of me. The popular guy died and now I'm popular because I'm the misery chick. But I'm not miserable. I'm just not like them. The whole experience also puts a strain on Jane and Daria's relationship briefly. This is the core relationship of the entire series, but it's not the only key relationship tied to Daria's life that needs to be highlighted. Let's focus a little bit on Daria's relationship with her family, as it's a huge ongoing arc throughout the series. One of the most powerful moments in the entire series is actually in the season two finale, right where it hurts. Daria is tasked to write a fictional story using people in her actual life, and she struggles on how to write a good story, so she vents to her mom that she can't write anything meaningful. Her mom suggests that maybe she writes something honest about what she wants to see, and then we see the story that she wrote. Daria is a respected journalist and college educator. Her mom is out of work and more focused on her family, and after a heart attack, her dad has become a less angry man. Quinn has also calmed down after becoming a mother. The family all comes together to play a game of cards. When Helen reads the story, she begins to cry because it's at this moment she realizes that Daria actually loves her family and just wants them to be a family. Helen and Jake's disconnect but concern for their daughter pops up again in Season 3, Episode 8, Lane Miserables, as well. While Jane is staying at the Morgendorfers to get away from her unusually packed house, Helen and Jake just want to know that Daria is not doing any drugs or isn't struggling with depression. Drugs? Nope, unless you count TV. Depressed? No, just realistic. Sex? 
Oh, that's too obvious. Can I have another one? Her relationship with her family is even more crucial when we factor in her relationship with Quinn throughout the series. Now, for the first four seasons of the show, Quinn is defined as a self-absorbed second child. She's the complete opposite of Daria. She does poorly in school, she spends all of her time dating boys, and she worries about her popularity and hanging with her very snotty group of friends in the fashion club. There are signs in the show, though, that there's more substance to Quinn than what she gives off, and it all starts to really begin in the TV movie Is It Fall Yet? After almost failing her history class, She's given a tutor to help her get into a party school. Her tutor is strict on the entire fashion club, which leads to him dropping all of them as students except for Quinn. Quinn refuses to let him quit on her because deep down she knows that she's smarter than her friends and is proven correct when she learns the material, even impressing her tutor. The following season, during a school strike, Daria becomes her substitute teacher and reiterates this fact by telling Quinn that she knows that she's smart enough to pass the test. Again, another example of Daria being a quality teacher. In a truly powerful moment at the end of this episode, Quinn admits to being Daria's sister for the first time. Maybe we should cut her some slack. See, there she goes taking sides again. You two are so nice to each other. You're almost like sisters. I'm not taking anyone's side, Sandy. Besides, why shouldn't I act sisterly towards her? After all, she's my sister. (gasps) Did you hear that? Oh my gosh, Quinn just admitted that weird girl is her sister. Well, um... Of course she is, Sandy. We knew that. We were just being polite about it. A few episodes later, Quinn and Daria are stuck in the house while Helen's sister is in town. As they watch their mother and their aunt bicker and fight, Quinn begins to force herself to relate to Daria. It's ultimately revealed that the experience has scared Quinn into thinking Daria and her will grow up to resent each other as well. Just as the show is winding down, it's a perfect example of how far they've come from the start of this series. I want to dedicate time to the final episode of Daria and the TV movie that closed out the series, but there's one more relationship that we really need to break down first. And like I said, it's the core relationship of the entire series. Jane and Daria are the characters who are destined to be best friends. From the second they meet, they have each other to lean on. And as I mentioned in The Misery Chick, that was one of the first times you saw them fight. The one thing that makes their friendship a little unstable, however, is when boys are involved. Daria is fairly asexual throughout the show, even with her crush on Trent. But as early as season two, the two friends already have rifts when it comes to boys. In episode 11 of season two, Jane joins the track team because of a cute guy and turns out to be a shockingly good runner. This starts an arc of Daria feeling left alone with her thoughts and developing a weird habit of talking to herself because she can't have a conversation with her friend without other people bothering them. They get into an argument over Jane taking advantage of being a star athlete to get a buy on a test, but when the cute guy that Jane joined the track team for starts to trash talk Daria, Jane's loyalty comes into play and she quits the track team in solidarity. This episode seems like a perfect precursor to the season three finale, Jane's Addiction, that introduces Tom, the rich, cute guy from another school that Jane immediately falls for at a Mystic Spiral show. Daria and Jane are supposed to be working together on a school project, but Jane's new love keeps distracting her from the work, causing Daria to get increasingly frustrated. It's also throughout this episode that Daria eventually gets over Trent when she realizes that him and her were never a good combination. Throughout most of season four, there's a clear issue between Jane and Daria, specifically Daria not liking or trusting Tom in Jane's life. Slowly, Daria starts to realize the things that her and Tom have in common, and they become friends, beginning around episode 6 of season 4, I Low the Parade. In this episode, Daria accidentally ends up stuck in the middle of the Lawndale Homecoming Parade. Within the crowd, she finds Jane, who's looking for Tom outside of a pharmacy. As she continues down the parade route, trying to escape the crowd, she encounters Tom waiting for Jane at a different pharmacy. Tom decides to tag along with Daria as they try to find Jane, as well as find an escape from the parade. Throughout this episode, Tom is also forcing Daria to have a little fun with the experience. They share a few tender moments, and when they do meet up with Jane, there is a hint of suspiciousness in her. Jane continues to be suspicious of her best friend and boyfriend throughout the rest of the season, but it hits its fever pitch in the season four finale, Die, Die, My Darling. Jane is fearful that Tom is falling for Daria and decides to win him back by dyeing her hair as a tribute to the lady in the tiger. However, she forces Daria to do the dye job for her. During the dye job, 
Jane begins to accuse Daria of having feelings for Tom, which causes a distraction for the already nervous Daria who has no experience with any beauty related things. When Jane finally sees what her hair actually looks like, she accuses Daria of intentionally messing up the job to make Tom stop loving her. Jane freaks out on Tom as well, yelling at him and accusing him of wanting to be with Daria. Tom shows up at Daria's and invites her into his car to talk about everything that's going on, and Daria gives a speech about her undying loyalty to Jane. Because I moved to this town and I knew immediately I'd be a total outcast. And in the one moment of good luck I've had in my entire life, I met another outcast who I could really be friends with and not have to feel completely alone. And then you came along and screwed the whole thing up. Before Tom kisses her. And then they both realize that they have feelings for each other. Daria immediately tells Jane that they kissed, which causes Jane and Tom to immediately break up. However, Jane ultimately gives Tom and Daria her blessing, but still holds resentment and needs time away from them, leaving the season on its first down note. Are we still friends? Are we? Yeah, we're the kind of friends who can't stand the sight of each other. Temporarily, right? I hope so, Daria. Enter Daria's first movie, Is It Fall Yet? At the start, Jane is still bitter and making cruel jokes about Daria dating Tom. Jane goes off on a two-month art program away from Lawndale, with her and Daria barely on speaking terms. And Daria is left alone in town, dealing with the awkwardness that every time she sees anyone, they assume that Tom is still Jane's boyfriend. Meanwhile, Helen forces Daria to volunteer at the school's OK to Cry Corral, where once again, Daria's knack for teaching shows itself as she becomes a great mentor for a particularly depressed and angry student at the camp. Daria becomes frustrated with how distractingly different she is from Tom's family and decides to break up with him. In desperate need for companionship after her miserable summer, Daria calls Jane at camp and decides to hitch a ride with Trent and the rest of Mystic Spiral as they're playing a show near the camp and she'll be able to see Jane. Finally, Jane stops hiding behind the jokes and she opens up in one of the most powerful speeches in the show. I'm confused. What are we fighting about here? We're fighting about you, Daria Morgendorfer, being dumb enough to think a boyfriend is worth screwing up a really good friendship for. A really important friendship. I'm sorry if I did that. There's just something in the way that Jane says a really important friendship that literally breaks my heart every time I hear her say it. Mystic Spiral debuts a new song, Freakin' Friends, that they wrote about Daria and Jane. And while listening to the song, they decide that they need to put their arguments to rest. Just as Daria is about to return home, Jane tells her that she should give Tom another chance. I've highlighted most of the noteworthy moments in season five already because it focuses a lot more on Daria and her family relationships. That brings us to June 25th, 2001 when the final episode of Daria aired. Season five, episode 13, Boxing Daria. One of the deepest episodes of a cartoon that I have ever seen. After the Morgendorfers get a new fridge, Daria sees the abandoned refrigerator box and it sparks a buried memory from when she was five years old, hearing her mom and dad fighting about how weird she is. Daria begins to snap at Tom and her teachers and even her mom as the memories of her childhood keep bubbling up. Eventually, she crawls inside the abandoned box and remembers that the fight escalated to the point where Jake left town for a few days. It was during that time that she would crawl into a box in her bedroom and just read in an effort to escape the sadness of her world. Jake and Helen open up to Daria about the fight. They knew that Daria was smart, but that meant that they also had to deal with phone calls all day from the school about her antisocial behavior, and that's what led to the big fight. Overwhelmed with knowing that she's been a burden to her family, Daria drives away to see Tom, but ends up almost getting in a car accident, which startles her. She then parks at a local diner and calls the one person that she needs, Jane. As soon as she sees Jane, she runs up and hugs her, an action of intimacy that we have never seen from Daria up to this point. And Jane tells Daria that she needs to go home and talk to her family. We're about to get personal here. Um, when my family changed schools, I was about nine years old and it was decided that I should repeat third grade because I was struggling to make friends. The guidance counselor felt that perhaps being around younger kids would help me out a bit. And it wasn't until very recently in a therapy session that I realized how much this decision affected my self-esteem. When I rewatched Boxing Daria for this video, 
it was a cathartic experience for me. For someone like myself, there aren't a lot of shows that have captured a moment like this so beautifully. Jake and Helen and Quinn barely remember any of this happening. It's a faint memory at best. But for Daria, it subconsciously became the defining moment that set her on the path that she had been on for the last 10 years. That's fantastic writing regardless of what the show is. And that's what made myself and millions of other Daria fans such loyalists to it. Do you remember at the start of the video, I highlighted that ink blot scene from episode one? You don't remember? Here, I'll, I'll show it again real quick. Daria, what do you see in the picture, Dara? A herd of beautiful wild ponies running free across the plains. Uh, there aren't any ponies. It's two people. Last time I took one of these tests, they told me they were clouds. They said they could be whatever I wanted. That's a different test, dear. In this test, they're people, and you tell me what they're discussing. Oh, it's a guy and a girl, and they're discussing a herd of beautiful wild ponies running free across the plains. I want you to see something in Boxing Daria that blows my mind. You tell me what you see when you look at the picture. What do you mean? That's not a picture. Well, not the kind of picture we're used to seeing. This picture lets you make up what it's about. Then why don't I just draw my own picture? For instance, one little boy or girl might look at it and see a fire truck or a house. Another might see a herd of beautiful wild ponies running free across the plains. It's just a black splotch. I love that they bring this ink blot test back in. And this throwaway joke in the beginning of the show has such a deeper meaning now that that she references like last time they told me it could be anything. And she keeps saying about the horses on the plane, which is the example that the therapist gives her earlier. How cool is the symmetry in all this? Boxing Daria was only sort of the final episode. It tied up a lot of the emotional beats in a beautiful way, but Daria deserved a proper send off. And we got that a couple months later, on January 21st, 2002, with the release of her second and final film, Is It College Yet? Senior year is coming to a close, and Daria, Jane, and her classmates are trying to figure out their college plans. Meanwhile, Quinn's credit spending leads to Helen forcing her to get a job. Daria and Tom are both trying to go to the same first-choice school, a college called Bromwell, which has a long history of Tom's family both attending and generously donating to. Additionally, Jane is struggling with deciding if she even wants to go to art school after receiving rejection letters from all of her backup schools. Due to her work schedule, Quinn walks away from the fashion club temporarily and begins to befriend the college students at her job. She becomes concerned that one of her co-workers, Lindy, has a drinking problem. When she mentions her concerns to Lindy, Quinn is immediately cut off. What I love about this particular story arc is that while Lindy gives Quinn an explanation on how she's not an alcoholic, it's not a strong explanation, and you can tell in Quinn's reaction that she doesn't fully believe her. In college, I had many friends who were clearly alcoholics and used a similar, I can go a week without drinking so clearly I don't have a problem excuse. I love that this show doesn't make this a morality tale, though Lindy does get fired for drinking at work. And that Quinn doesn't magically fix her either. Dory becomes more frustrated with Tom and his family when they go to look at Bromwell, and then the plan is to check out Daria's second schools in Boston. However, during their admissions interview, Tom spends close to an hour sharing stories of his family, while Daria's antisocial behaviors lead to her interview being a short, awkward 15-minute chat. Instead of leaving that day for Boston, they plan a breakfast with the professor who's a friend of their family, hoping that it will give Tom even more edge, causing Daria not to get to see any of her Boston options. When Tom gets in but Daria gets waitlisted, it causes another rift between the two, which leads to them breaking up for good. The newly single Daria focuses her energy on Jane, trying to convince her to submit her art portfolio to her top school in Boston, both because she wants her friend to go to college, but also because she wants to be in Boston with her. The movie ends on a fantastic note. Dari and Jane are going to go to Boston together. Quinn's experience with Lindy has caused her to grow as a person, and the fashion club breaks up as a result. And Daria wins an award for academic excellence, giving one of the most genuine and real speeches to ever summarize the high school experience. Um, 
Thank you. I'm not much for public speaking, or much for speaking, or, come to think of it, much for the public. And I'm not very good at lying. So let me just say that, in my experience, high school sucks. If I had to do it all over again, I'd have started advanced placement classes in preschool so I could go from 8th grade straight to college. However, given the unalterable fact that high school sucks, I'd like to add that if you're lucky enough to have a good friend and a family that cares, it doesn't have to suck quite as much. Otherwise, my advice is, stand firm for what you believe in, until and unless logic and experience prove you wrong. Remember, when the emperor looks naked, the emperor is naked. The truth and a lie are not sort of the same thing, and there's no aspect, no facet, no moment of life that can't be improved with pizza. Thank you. Now, I have to address that I'm just scratching the surface as to why this is such a great movie. Trent shows some genuine companionship with Jane. He feels that his close sibling relationship is going to be broken when she moves to Boston. And I barely spoke about Jody and Mac. Jody and Mac are the token black kids at Lawndale. But unlike most teen flicks at the time, they are so vocal about their status of being a minority and having to worry about the social and racial issues differently than the rest of their classmates. And in this film, there's a huge subplot about Jody's father wanting her to go to this impressive Ivy League school while Jody just wants to go to a historical black college where she can experience not being the token girl for once. They're talking about producing a spinoff series on Jody, and I think that she's truly the character who's most deserving of a spinoff, particularly in 2022. I would love to do a follow-up video with this one in the future where we just focus on the Jody-centric episodes and their impact. If that's something that you want to see, please comment saying as such on the video. And don't make me taint this video with any more shilling than that. You know what all the other people on YouTube ask you to do if you like their video. So whatever they said, do it. High school is a difficult time. You struggle with your classes and your social rankings and your family issues and romance and constantly worrying about your future. And sadly, your 30s aren't much better. You just replace class with work, but it's basically the exact same. What Dari did beautifully was it walked that line of awkwardness and highlighted those cynical sides of high school. You do have the very dumb self-absorbed students and the teachers who gave up hope long ago, corrupt school higher-ups, and a constant feeling of awkward isolation. But it also captured the good parts, like best friends and first loves, teachers who really care, and they want to change your life. And the kids who managed to be well-liked, smart, and kind despite everything happening around them. Every so often on Daria, you'd get a weird episode. You'd find sentient holidays or them telling weird campfire tales. But more often than not, the series could have existed as a live action show. That's why when you see the live action versions of this show on YouTube, it doesn't feel awkward. Hell, we should do a live action movie right now. Like, Atypical's Brigitte Lundy Payne is perfect for Jane Lane. Like, someone should do that as soon as possible. I watched the full run of this show twice for this video, and honestly, I'm already feeling an itch to watch it a third time. Few things make me miss high school, but Daria is one of those things. If you've never seen it, you should watch it. If you haven't seen it in years, you should revisit it. If you saw it as a kid, and much like me, it didn't hit you the same way at first, it's worth checking out. You're going to be pleasantly surprised. I'm Matt Kelly from Geekscape. Thanks for watching.